Okay, move out. I'm Dana Andrews, your host on this issue of The Big Picture. We all know that the primary object of military action is victory in combat. And our soldiers in Vietnam are fighting hard to win each engagement with the enemy. However, the United States Army also has units and military advisors in many other lands to preserve the strength of the free world, to ensure that it remain free. Still another important endeavor of the United States Army is the fight against thirst, poverty, and disease in the underdeveloped areas of the globe. Today, you're going to see examples of your Army's involvement in all these activities. Our first report is from South America, where U.S. Army personnel are engaged in a number of projects under the banner of civic action. High above the dense interior of Ecuador, a U.S. geodetic survey team maps the land. The search is for water, water for drinking, water to make the earth fertile, water for a dozen purposes that add up to the health, welfare, and economic well-being of the people. Charting the wilds of this area is one of the civic action projects of the U.S. Army 937th Engineers in conjunction with the Ecuador military personnel. Latest devices in cartography and photographic reproduction are used in the survey operations. Enlarged maps or aerial photographs help to identify and locate lakes or streams that might be tapped for water. Using information gathered in the survey, Teams of military and civilian experts plot methods for getting the water to the areas where it is needed. Engineering teams under U.S. supervision move out to the field where the plans are outlined to the local people who will help with the work. There is a technique to everything, and a member of the survey team demonstrates the proper way to dig an irrigation ditch. People learn quickly. So many ditches to dig. So many rocks to be broken up. Rocks that mean construction materials, that mean canals, that mean ultimately a better way of life. Here on the rugged plateaus of the Andes, the quest for water goes forward with assistance from U.S. soldiers. Throughout Ecuador and in other South American countries, the U.S. Army participates in aid programs aimed at improving the land. Near La Paz, Bolivia, the Valley of Hope is a haven for delinquent boys who might otherwise be imprisoned in city jails. The home is located high on a hillside in and around an old hacienda overlooking a farming valley. The U.S. Army mission in Bolivia supports the rehabilitation aims of the home, which was founded by detectives of the Bolivian National Department of Criminal Investigation. Established in 1965, the home immediately drew the interest of the U.S. Army mission members as an off-duty and mostly personal project. 
American military personnel offer materials and volunteer assistance in the construction of the various facilities required for this Bolivian boys' town. The youngsters pitch in to clear the area and provide wood for their furniture and other construction needs. Again, water is a main concern. And the boys organize a do-it-yourself method of bringing water into the home. But the U.S. Army Engineer Corps has a few suggestions on how to improve the system. Workshops at the home are equipped largely from personal donations. Chow time and a prayer. The Boys Valley Home operates on about $100 a month and the off-duty help from the U.S. Army Mission personnel. An extensive education program has been planned and has attracted the attention of school authorities from other parts of the country. Donations of school supplies and equipment by U.S. Army members and others help provide adequate educational facilities. Knowledge of a trade helps build confidence, and the youths learn various types of skills and crafts. Many of the hand tools are made by the boys themselves, and they learn how to work with a variety of raw materials. Many items turned out in the shops are sold as souvenirs in the city, providing pocket money for the youngsters. They're also taught the importance of living under community rules. There is plenty of time and space for recreation. There are no fences around the home as there's little or no need for them. There's even water for a swimming pool. Everything possible is done to give the boys a good life, to convince them that they have not been rejected. Here they have every opportunity to find their true identity. And they learn that their hungers can be satisfied without breaking the law. Conferences by supervisors of the home and US Army advisors are held whenever necessary to determine plans and policies. The men who help in this rehabilitation effort, both U.S. military personnel and Bolivian officials, have only one reward, the knowledge that they are building a sense of self-sufficiency and self-respect in these citizens of tomorrow. Halfway around the world, on the island of Matsu, Republic of China, United States military advisors are engaging in activities to help our friends and allies, the nationalist Chinese. They advise the nationalist army on military subjects and also participate in local medical and educational civic action projects. The Matsu Defense Command advisor team, called Mudcat, directs their activities from their headquarters. The health of the soldiers and civilians on the Matsu Island complex is a prime concern of the Mudcat medical and dental teams, who use the newest equipment and techniques to accomplish their mission on physical well-being. Civic action projects result in high health standards and help strengthen the common bonds of the freedom-loving people of Matsu and their American friends. Military advisors also conduct English language classes at the local Matsu Junior Middle School, which furthers understanding between the two countries. In the back of the room over here, and I want to hear the young man in the back of the room over here. And on top of that, I want to hear you, 
and I want to hear you. Okay, we're off to New York. Taxi, taxi. Taxi, taxi. Where to, sir? Where to, sir? Please take me to the airport. It will take 20 minutes. How much is the fare? Two dollars and fifty cents, please. Where is the ticket counter? Good. Over there. Next to the over there, next to the window. Good. May I buy a ticket, please? May I buy a ticket, please? Good. Yes. Where do you wish? Yet another means of informing people that the free world offers a more plentiful way of life. On the other side of the globe, near Stuttgart, Germany, Company C, Long Range Patrol of the 58th Infantry, is perfecting their specialized soldiering skills to help assure that the free world remains free. The primary mission of a Long Range Patrol is to enter a specified area within the enemy's territory to observe and report his activities. The individual soldier must be able to be delivered behind enemy lines by land, water, or parachutes, and is equipped to operate effectively for periods of several days in all types of weather and on various types of terrain. Difficult exercises in mountaineering are perfected during the training. The five-man team rapidly establishes a camouflage position and sets up a communication system for observing and reporting enemy movements. The report is sent back to the base camp. The alert is sounded and the troops on the ready pull out for action. During this typical realistic training mission, soldiers of the Long Range Patrol make a thorough last check of their equipment and receive a final briefing before takeoff in Army helicopter. Once over their objective, the reconnaissance team on the ground coordinates with the pilots. The jump master gives the signal, and the patrol is soon out of the door and earthbound. The men of Company C, Long Range Patrol, 58th Infantry, all volunteers and combat ready, are a fine example of the state of preparedness of a unit of the United States Army, Europe. After the exercise, a West German paratrooper of the Bundeswehr has participated in the training with the men of the Long Range Patrol, proudly receives American paratroop wings in a practical demonstration of cooperation between the armed forces of the two allied countries. Along the waterways in Vietnam, a new type of patrol craft is now being used. Patrol air cushion vehicles, PAC-Vs as they are called, are spearheading a series of special forces operations wreaking havoc among the Viet Cong in the Mekong Delta. Elements of the Army, Republic of Vietnam, familiar with the local terrain, assist in the mission. The pack bs are driven forward by an airplane-style rotor, and twin 50-caliber machine guns highlight the vehicle's armament.
Nearby, armed helicopters take off to help support the Pack B surface operations. The strange looking craft move out on the first leg of a typical one day mission in the area of Mokhoa, southwest of Saigon. This is a low lying farm region, but the unusually heavy rains have caused floods which have not yet receded. The craft can travel over both land and water at speeds up to 60 miles an hour. At a prescribed point, the choppers overhead join the pack bees, keeping in constant communication as they search the vast flooded district for any sign of activity. The helicopters continue their aerial surveillance, reporting to the craft below any suspicious movement. Soon, an unidentified boat is discovered and a Pack V races to intercept. The boat carries women and children. The refugees report that the Viet Cong have taken their possessions and are now using their house as a stronghold. Meanwhile, a security patrol searches the area. After questioning, the women are given food and clothing and allowed to continue on their way. The pack bees alert the helicopters and together they speed across the trackless marshes for the hunt. The armed Hueys make a pass at the target unleashing their 2.75 rockets and machine gun fire. Then the copters radio the pack bees to move in closer with their 50 caliber machine gun, ringing the enemy stronghold with their firepower. When the shelling ceases, troops from the Pack B cautiously search the area. Several camouflaged Viet Cong craft are discovered. They yield maps, rice, ammunition, and a number of documents wrapped in waterproof covering. Another operation concludes successfully as a new air and water patrol technique is used effectively to seek out the enemy. To kill a tiger, learn the ways of a tiger. This is the theme of the 25th Infantry Division's Ambush Academy. The Ambush Academy gives an intensive 50-hour training course in ambushes and patrols at the base camp at Koo Chi, South Vietnam. The goal of the school is to increase the effectiveness of the fighting man while teaching him to stay alive in a combat situation. A unit which ambushes well can do any task well. Instruction, demonstrations, and tactical exercises are all used in the training. Good morning, men. Good morning. Good morning, sir. I'm Student Sergeant Thompson, Lightning Ambush Academy. I'll be your principal instructor for approximately the next 50 minutes, during which time we will discuss daylight navigation. Perhaps one of the most difficult 
and most important parts of conducting a successful ambush patrol is to be sure that you get to the ambush site correctly and to be sure that you get back accurately. It is important that you be able to move accurately from one place to another in order to establish a successful ambush. From classroom to practical field exercises, led by a seasoned infantryman. Simulated explosions call for quick response by the students. They take cover and experience the shocks and sounds of combat. back here for rear security. Okay. Okay, move out. From the teaching of infantry tactics to the proper coordination of a fire direction center and artillery. A known reference point. From 050, right? We have our known reference point out there. The next thing you need is the direction. What is the direction to the target? 5700. All right, we'll use 5700. That's exactly what it is. The next thing you need is your lateral shift. How far left do you have to go from the white smoke to the target? That is the target, gentlemen, and it's a perfect hit. First round. Killer nine. This is our killer nine. This is killer five four. Repeat far for effect. Over. Ah, uh, this is killer nine. Repeat. The Academy's instruction is centered around all the possibilities of contact with the Viet Cong, including not only an ambush situation, but reacting to sniper fire or a chance encounter with the enemy. Smoke is employed to simulate night during these exercises, and the men must learn to keep in close contact and operate as a team. For near the completion of the course, they will conduct a night patrol into VC territory. The men gain first-hand experience, learning the enemy's tactics on his home ground in order to challenge and defeat him. After attending the Ambush Academy, the men of the 25th Infantry Division are better equipped to stay alive in combat and be more effective in battle. Now the men have learned the ways of a tiger. Elsewhere, northwest of Saigon, the 1st Infantry Division the Big Red One is encamped in Bing Dong province. A squad leader is briefing his men on their next mission, a search and clear operation in a rubber plantation several kilometers away. As the men disperse to make a final check on their equipment, the sergeant reports to the company executive officer for briefing instructions and syrup. The troops take off for the hunt. Ahead lies the roadless tracks of enemy-ridden Vietnamese jungle, which they will hurdle with the assistance of those reliable army workhorses, the choppers. Each patrol member is left with his own thoughts as the helicopters carry them to their mission in the jungle. Once in the area, the patrol is again briefed on the movements and tactics of approach before starting their search and clear operation in the plantation.
Then, the patrol is on its feet and moves out cautiously forward through the dense surrounding foliage, keeping on the alert for any signs of the well-hidden Viet Cong. Soon, sniper fires are encountered and the men take cover and try to pinpoint its position. Now the Viet Cong open fire with machine guns and grenades. The tall elephant grass offers some concealment as the troops return the fire. The fight goes on for 15 minutes, but seems much longer. The engagement over, contact is made with the helicopters for evacuation of the men. In the war against the VC, no one knows whether an engagement will mean a brief scrimmage or a major battle, but the infantrymen are well prepared for any eventuality. Later, back at the base camp, an award ceremony is held to honor outstanding performance in combat. The company squad leader is honored for heroism under fire, while others receive the Purple Heart for wounds suffered in combat. We hope you have found interesting and informative this brief pictorial tour of but several of the many areas where your army is active throughout the world and that perhaps you have learned something new about the global nature of your United States Army in action.